In this video, we're going to take a look at the AppLink export option for sending a mesh from Blender to 3D Code as a voxel object. We'll select that from the list here, then click Send, then step over into 3D Code. It puts us into the Sculpt workspace. I will now expand the UI. You can see the preview object. It's not yet committed to a layer. And I need to explain for anyone who is new to 3D Coat the difference between voxels and surface mode. The main thing to remember is when you're working with voxels, you're working with volumetric pixels. So in that sense, it's not entirely different than working in Photoshop. If you start with a large image, or in this case, a large object in terms of its scale on the grid, then you have a naturally high level of resolution, just like you would a very large scale image in Photoshop. Also, if you happen to start with a low scale image in Photoshop, you would need to increase the DPI or the resolution per inch or per unit of measure in order to increase the resolution sufficiently for the level of detail you need on that smaller image. A good example of that might be something like a business card or mailer of some kind with graphics on it. I apologize for the lengthy explanation, but it is important to remember that scale does matter. If I were to go ahead and apply this by hitting the Enter key, I probably would not have enough resolution. Let me go ahead and hit the Enter key. It's asking, do I want to remember the original scale? I'll hit Yes. I'm seeing the committed object on the layer, and I'm also seeing a ghosted preview object. Once I select another tool or brush, I'll no longer see that preview object. Okay, so we can see the result. There aren't enough voxels to maintain this thin structure here for most of this object. Let's go ahead and clear the object from the layer. We'll leave the layer intact. We'll try it again. Now, what do we need to do to correct this? One thing I could do is scale it up. I can also click this icon at the bottom of the sculpt tree, which used to be called box tree panel. At the bottom of the panel, I can increase the resolution on that layer before I apply it. So in a sense, this is like increasing the dots per inch on a small scale image in Photoshop ahead of time. I'll click the increase resolution icon a few times and I will stick with eight levels of increased resolution. After working with voxels for a while, you can get a good feel for what scale or level of resolution is needed for each object you bring into the scene. Let's go ahead and click Apply. Now, as I zoom in, you can see the faceting that we don't necessarily see here in Blender, and that's because of the viewport smoothing. The reason why we have this with voxels and we don't have it with surface mode objects is because voxels do not have vertex normals. Regardless of whether we import the model as a voxel object or a surface mesh, we still need to perform a bit of model prep just like we would if we were in Blender and applying a subdivision modifier to it. As you can see, there will be some parts that will be overly smooth, which we do not want. So we need to go back and apply some additional edge loops along the areas we want to preserve. We could perform this model prep either in Blender or in 3D Coat. Assuming you already know how to do this in Blender, I will demonstrate how to do so in 3D Coat instead. Let's first delete that subdivision modifier. Before we proceed, we need to establish what our intended workflow is. In most cases, it would be to perform some sculpting edits and perhaps some vertex painting, then bake all the texture and depth onto this original low poly mesh. If that's the case, then what we probably would want to do is first send it to the Retopo workspace as a new layer, regardless of whether we do our prep work in Blender or 3D Coat. So with the option chosen, I'll click Send, and then come over to 3D Coat. All right, now I'll hit Apply. It's asking, do I want to snap this to an underlying voxel object? In this case, I do not. 
So I'll click no. We have our object and our UV maps. Okay. Now what I need to do is go to the scope workspace. In the geometry menu, I'll choose retopo mesh to scope mesh. You can assign a hotkey to it if you plan to use it frequently by hovering over the option, then hitting the end key on your keyboard and designate your preferred hotkey assignment. It might also be worth mentioning that you can assign hotkeys to the workspace tabs to quickly move between them as well. So let's go to the top of workspace and I'll adjust the opacity down. If I were to use a large scale modification tool such as transform, pose tool, or the move tool, you'll see an option here in the toolbar called Conform Retopo Mesh. With that selected, I can move and see that Retopo Mesh adjusted with the Sculpt Mesh at the same time. I'll undo a few times. Now, if I am using brushes to make edits, then as of this recording, there is no conform to retopo mesh option, and that's for the sake of performance. But Andrew may add an option somewhere down the road. However, if I were to use a brush, uh, let's say maybe like a clay brush. As I make a stroke, I can come back to the Retapo workspace and use the brush tool. All I have to do is just tap in the area and 3D Coat with auto snapping enabled, and our Retapo mesh should snap underneath our brush in a localized fashion. You also can snap the mesh globally if you need. I'm going to undo a few times. 